thought I'd better show you, uh, at least give it a shot here, on trying to get this arbor out. Uh, this funny looking thing you see down here is an old hand screw wood clamp uh, that belonged to my dad. And uh, what I want to show you here is as we zoom in on the arbor, I want to get it to the point where you can see what's going on. This key that's sticking out here prevents us from getting the arbor and everything out. Can't get the bearings off the shaft, can't get the shaft out of the bearings. You know, you look at it any way you want. We've got to get this key out. Now on the sear saws, on the arbor, they have again what, what I, we call a woodruff key. And what this is, it's a uh, little semicircular key and it presses down in. And what I want to do is I'm going to try to get the point of a chisel in here. Now, fortunately, it looks like it loosened up pretty well. Now, you don't want to go pounding around on these too much because if you bend your arbor, then you got another problem to contend with. That's a little more mechanical modulation here. It's coming well. There you go. That is a woodruff key. See how it's semicircular? And we have a round cutout in the shaft. This is peculiar to Sears. Most other saws on the arbors have square keys that are much easier to get out because you can work at them from the end. But anyway, now we've got that done. Let's see if we can get this arbor out. Now, the first thing we're going to do here to get see if we can move this arbor shaft is remember that clip I was telling you about? I wasn't really where it belonged. I'm, I'm gonna see if I can grab that with my needle nose. I don't really have a pair of snap ring pliers here, but this seems to be coming off fairly well. And as soon as I can get it up to a point where I can, nope, can't do it yet. I'm gonna get that clip off. If you had snap ring pliers, you'd be able to put them right in the end of this thing and get that off with dirt. There we go, we're getting good. And we get this off. And then we're gonna pull these three screws. Now, if these are machine thread, uh, th these right now that Sears use just plain old slotted screws in here and I think when I put this back together I'll probably go with Allen screws just in case something ever goes wrong with this thing again to make it much easier for me to to get this thing apart So we pull those three screws, and right here, you can see the outer bearing. Okay. And let me think about how I want to do this. Oh, wow. I think that bottom bearing actually has started to pop out already. Yeah, it has. Uh, just for kicks, if I can find my dead blow hammer again, there it is. Now, with everything I'm going through, I don't plan on trying to save these bearings. That's the reason I'm standing here pounding on this thing the way I am. And one of the things I must do is to loosen up my clamp that I was holding that shaft with because obviously that I think it's another case where the rust got me good.
It was a little bit difficult for me to see. But you notice when I pounded on that shaft, you, you notice how my bearing on the arbor flange side has already popped off. So I think what I'm gonna do, just to give this a shot, is I'm gonna tap in the opposite direction and see if I can pound that other bearing off because if I can get that other bearing off, then I can use my little gear puller to pull that bearing off. So let's, let's just see what happens here. Wow, that was some, okay. That wasn't staged, by the way. We both fell out at the same time. Now, the only problem is I don't have enough. Let me turn this over again. I'm pretty confident I can get my gear puller on there. I've got my gear puller adjusted. What I want to do here, let me see if I can, oh good, I'm going to sneak this thing under there. I'm going to tighten. Now we want to keep this as straight as we can, give a even pull. You know, it would be, probably be better, uh, this is a, a, either a three or four finger uh, unit. I took couple of them off just to make things easier for you to see. But what we're going to do here, if I can figure out how a ratchet works, I wish I, I'm going to lock that arbor down again. And let's see what happens. Well, something popped. My gear puller is still on. That might be an indication the uh, bearings come along with us. I hope so. And I guarantee you, you would not want to put this bearing back on after you've done what I'm doing. So. This is the inner clip to position the bearing. See, in other words, you see we've got a clip here. We had a clip that was supposed to be here. So what that does, you notice here on the inside, we've got that bearing sandwiched. But we also have the arbor out of the saw. Now it's time to figure out how we're going to clean this thing up. I've got about, I'd say a little over an eighth of an inch of gap on this. I really don't want to pound on it anymore. I don't want to break anything. So what I've done is I came in with a center punch and I put an indentation uh, in the end of the shaft, okay? And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drill me kind of a pilot type hole. And then I want to come in with a bit that's about the size of the uh, threaded shaft on my gear puller. And I just want to invent that. This, this is not going to hurt a thing. I'll, the only reason we're doing this is so when I come in and put my gear puller in here, what I have is a locating area so I don't need to worry about this thing flopping back and forth. Now, what I'm going to do, and now I'm going to tighten it, that shaft up. I did uh, hit this with lube a couple times, and uh, to be real honest with you, uh, at this point, one or two things is, is going to happen. Uh, there's a good chance, because I'm not in very far on, on the inside, I just don't have the, the depth yet, I've got to get that space bigger, this could pop out. 
but uh, depending on how rusted this is, it's either going to A, start to come off, or B, will probably break the gear puller. So let's give this a shot and see what happens. issues I'm having because uh, because the uh, clearance doesn't allow me to keep that gear puller straight up and down. I'm having to try to hold this. I'm going to back this off a little bit. See if I can get it more on line with the shaft. shape. It's moving. I know this has been a pain up to this point, but I don't know whether you can see it on camera, but I've actually brought this thing up far enough to where I can cannot see, I should say, the uh, slot, the seat clip goes in. Look at this, folks. I get to a certain point. I want to make sure I've got the uh, the forks, you know, the tips on that gear puller. I want to make sure I've got them in as far as I can. I'm going to back it off a bit. So I feel confident. Oh, I can't believe this. I can tell you right now, folks. This all can be salvaged. Check that out. There it is. And it's been a lot of work getting to this point, but I'll tell you what, uh, when I get done with this, I guarantee you I will have a uh, definite fondness for, the, for this old machine. It's going to be fun to finish this out. Just for me, this, well, I've got this thing to this point. And I, ha I haven't done anything to this. I just took that out and all. But... Uh, one of the things I want to see here okay, is how much trouble will this thing be to put back together. I've done nothing. See that? Isn't that sweet? It's tight as far as play goes, but moves quite smoothly. So, like I said earlier, uh, it's been kind of frustrating getting to here, but uh, I think at this point. I think, we, I think we can turn this thing into a little beast, and uh, we're, we're just going to continue on and see what happens and uh, make the best of it. One of the things I want to show you is right here where we have the uh, blade tilt. There's a uh, bushing in here that's threaded for the rod to go in, and I think I'm going to try to pull that thing out. You can see it, it actually had a, a, a star washer, I guess you call it. With, teeth on the outside and it kind of went flying when I popped it out but I want to see if I can find a way to get this and if we're going to do it may as well do it a hundred percent old screwdriver
That is the blade tilt bushing, I guess we would call it. And one of the things I want to do here, I, I don't know whether it makes any difference which way this goes in. This is the side, the end, I should say, that came out. What I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to mark that in. I'm going to stick a little scratch in it to remember, and then later I'm going to drill me a little uh, indentation in this end so I know that's the part that goes in last. Okay. But uh, yeah, I think this old saw may turn out all right. I've got to admit, I'm very happy uh, with the way we finally got this thing broken loose, but I got to looking at at these parts, and what I want to show you, if, if you look here, we've got significant rust on this. There's rust, and I mean bad rust, all over this. The arbor, you can see, right, is an absolute mess. And the threads on this are really bad. The blade elevation shaft, right, has significant rust. The blade tilt lead screw, and I apologize for this thing bouncing all over. But you can see I've got rust all over it. Now, this collar right here is the stop for the tilt. And I, ca I cannot get it to turn. This plate that we took off is terribly rusted. The, the top of this saw looks like it came out of a swamp. Now, I don't want to put all this work into this saw and, and put it back together with this. Uh, at my age, I uh, probably wouldn't live long enough to de-rust it with a wire brush. So I think what I'm going to do for a cleanup is we're going to try a, a technique called electrolysis and see if we can get the uh, worst of the rust off these parts using that method.